So, first things first, Joshua. Yes. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. So, before we get into the music and your latest record, I'd like to go back a little bit. Do you still draw or paint? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Not as much as I used to, no. But um, when I started playing music, it sort of took a lot of my creative energy. So, anytime I feel like I want to express myself, I tend to pick up the guitar and try to write something. Because I did see you uh, paint a picture of John Coltrane, I believe, for your father. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, he loves jazz. Okay. So is that kind of the side where uh, your interest in music comes from as well? Your dad's side? Uh, my dad and my mom always had great records playing in the house and in the car, listening to like Beatles and Simon and Garfunkel and Neil Young and Bob Dylan. And then a lot of Motown, a lot of old soul music like Aretha and Otis Redding and mm. Sam Cooke, Wilson Pickett, Marvin Gaye. Um, yeah, that was, and that's all the music I still listen to today. I, I hardly ever listen to anything new. Okay. How much of that were you, this might sound a bit weird, but aware of at that time because you weren't thinking of music in, in, in a kind of career way or so, so, especially early on, what kind of role did music I was just a fan okay. and still am, you know, I, I didn't grow up playing any music, mm. just singing in the shower. So um, I just never thought I'd go to concerts all the time. I'd spend all my money on okay. going to see concerts and buying CDs. And uh, But um, I would look at the musicians on stage and I would think, oh, that'd be so cool to be able to do that. But I didn't start when I was young and they probably all did. So, you know. So finally, when I was 30, I bought a guitar and uh, learned a few chords. And about six months after that, I, I wrote my first song. So I was already a writer, but now then I just added guitar and some melody to it. And um, it just seemed like a natural fit for me. The, the first song I wrote just seemed like I had expressed myself more honestly in that one three and a half minute song than I had in any screenplay I had written or any painting I had painted. Um, so it just, I was like, wow, it was like Eureka, you know. Because what was that uh, shift like in a way? Because like you say, you were writing screenplays and then you have a, a song where you basically have a couple of lines, three minutes to kind of distill all that information into one song. So what was that like, the transition to write? I, I, I found it pretty natural because painting and screenwriting are so visual. Mm. You think visually. Uh, so when I started writing songs, my brain just naturally was going to, how do, I just, how, how do I describe this feeling, but almost in a visual sense with words? And that could be one of the reasons so many series and movies and things like that wanted to use my music because um, maybe it was evocative of something visual as well. Because when you write, do you have that visual element always kind of in the background? Yeah. That's what I picture. I picture things in my head and then I describe them. Right. And well, when you start, because did you take to performing live as much as you did kind of to the writing aspect of it? No, 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 no. It took, it took at least a few years of okay. being on tour and playing before I got comfortable in front of an audience. I was terrified because I, I grew up, I wanted to be an artist in some way, create something, express myself, but I never uh, wanted to be in the light. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always wanted to do something creative behind the scenes. I never wanted to be in the spotlight on stage or like be an actor or something like that. I just never, I never craved that. So my, the first couple of years of, you know, I signed a record deal mm -hmm. and it was like, well, you got to go play shows. You got to, and I was terrified. You know, it was, um, but you know, you do something every day in a different city and, you start to grow and learn and now I'm more comfortable on stage probably than I am walking around. Were you surprised with how natural, naturally you kind of moved into the music industry or how, how kind of... Yeah, it's, I'm still surprised. I, I honestly can't believe I still get to do this. <laughs> okay. Because when... Um, well, when you start writing songs and you kind of, I, I suppose, 
when you paint or you, you write a screenplay, you don't get that instant feedback from, from yeah. somebody. So that's what I loved about it right off the bat. Okay. It would take a year to write each screenplay I wrote. I wrote six of them. Uh, and then you hand them in, you get notes. You, I mean, it's back and forth. And there's so many people that in order to make a film, Producers, actors, agents. I mean, so many people have to be involved and say yes, 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 yes. And then I was like, that's why I started writing music. It wasn't to become a musician. Okay. I wasn't thinking about being a professional musician. I was just, it was an outlet. It was like therapy. I was so frustrated in the film business that I was writing a guitar, you know, writing on guitar as, as meditation um, to calm my mind and to get my feelings out and like a diary, a journal. Right. And I could play them for a friend. I could, hey, I wrote this song. I play, and right away they, wow, you know, and get a response. Like mm -hmm. you say, that was incredible, uh, an incredible feeling. And I, f I became addicted to that feeling of, hey, what do you think about this song? Great. Okay. So can I assume then at this point you're just co uh, constantly writing? No, I'm, I'm not very prolific okay. like that. I have friends of mine that get up and write every day, sure. like it's a job. And I never wanted to make music a job. Okay. It's a, I fell into it later in life and I just, it's like a gift. So I write when I have something I feel like I really need to say to myself, to someone else, to the world. Uh, in fact, before I wrote this new album, I went through about nine months of not writing anything where I just, every time I'd pick up the guitar, I was just like, nah, I don't really feel like there's anything I need to say. Is, is that a... An anxious period then, because are, yeah. are you kind of worried that the well might run dry? Or, or? I was, okay. yeah. And I was thinking, ah, oh, well, maybe I'll just find something new to do. Okay. But the, so that, that kind of uh, positive aspect or positive mindset of, of, not, of a life not being set in stone and one path being the only path you have to follow. So that, that's yeah. very much, you're, you're very open towards kind of opportunities. And yeah, I think you have to stay curious. And the older you get, the harder it is to okay. stay curious. You know, when you're 20, the world is like, oh, you know. And then years go by and you've seen the world over and over and over again. I've met people from everywhere and done all these things. And you, it's easy to become a bit jaded and sure. be somewhere and be like, ah, oh, yeah, I get it. I, you know. Um, but all artists, I think anyone who does anything creative... I think that's the that's the most important thing is to stay curious, so like how, a child, like have that childlike curiosity. Sure. So, how did you kind of revitalize uh, that curiosity for this this latest album? How do you reinvigorate kind of your 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 hunger? <clears throat> well, like I said, I went through about nine months of writer's block. So I live in California, in Los Angeles, and I just felt like maybe I need a, a new environment to be inspired or something. Just try anything. So I flew to Spain and um, I sat on the beach, uh, like on a remote part, and I was the only one on the beach um, with my guitar, sitting out looking at the water. And I was like, all right, let's, if I can't be inspired here. If I... So uh, I was sitting there and I remember this dog, this stray dog uh, walked, I don't know, about 30, 40 feet from me. And we locked eyes, you know, didn't have a collar, um, no leash, no human. And it just seemed so free. And we locked eyes and we just stared at each other for like a full minute, like looking into each other's souls, you know, it was crazy. And I had this epiphany and I thought, I realized something about myself. And that was that I had always had so much anxiety about the future what happens next, this, this concept of what happens next to the world, to my friends and family, to me. And I'd lay in bed at night thinking about it all the time, consumed with these thoughts. <sighs> what a waste of time that is, you know? And this dog just, I don't know, I just I thought, this dog is just in the moment. Mm. I want to be in the moment. I want to be present. So... I thought, I'm going to write a song about being here, right now. And maybe every time I play it, it'll be like a mantra or something. It'll be like, um, it'll remind me over and over again every time I play it to uh, 
to be present. Uh, and so it was Here Right Now is the title track of the new album. And that was the first song I wrote for the album. And then it inspired the rest of the record. Uh, so I decided because of that dog, uh, I, would, I wanted to give back in a way to rescue animals, uh, strays. And uh, so all the money I make off that song here right now from streams, downloads, uh, I, I don't, I'm donating to uh, this organization called the North Shore Animal League America, which is the world's largest no-kill animal shelter okay. for rescue uh, dogs and cats. And it's just outside New York City. And I've, I've played a couple of charity benefits for them. They're a wonderful organization. And they do amazing work and just such good people. And so it's been really cool uh, to, uh, to be involved with them. And, and uh, every time I play this song on stage when I'm on tour, it's just, it reminds me. I, I try to play it early in the set right. every night. Uh, so it really locks me in. And I'm like, it really reminds me that it reinforces that idea of, of being in the moment and not thinking, oh, where am I going to be tomorrow? What, 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 where are we going to go for food? Where are we going what, to, what's the venue look like? Uh, is it sold out? Is it, you know, um, all those thoughts that go through your head. And sometimes they go through your head even on stage playing a concert in another city. And I don't want that. I just want to sure. lock in and be like, let's just enjoy this moment. And I love, most of my audience doesn't, pull out their phones for songs and video the whole time. And it's nice because they're in the moment with me. I never really understand that when people, I understand people want to take pictures, you know, whatever. People do that. That's the age we live in. I've done that at concerts, sure. of course. But the video thing, I sometimes, every now and again, you get someone who's like holding up their, their phone the whole like, time, video, and you're like, yeah. when are you ever going to, this is going to sound like, it's going to sound terrible when you watch it over again, you know, yeah, on the yeah. phone, like, why would you just in, put your phone down and enjoy like and just be here, you know? And have you kind of having this mantra and having this this real uh, reminder, uh, has it kind of changed? You know, this might be too vague, but has it changed other aspects of your life as well where you're less anxious? It's, I'm and, trying, you know, it's a it's a it's a work in progress, sure, sure. you know, but years ago, I wrote this song called No Envy, No Fear. Because at the time, I had just started playing and I was surrounded by all these amazing musicians and I was so envious of all of their talent and how comfortable they were in their skin and on stage. And they just seemed to have all the answers, you know? Like, of course, no one does, but sure. they just seemed like they could fake it real well, mm. which I learned <laughs> later on. Um, that most, most people who seem confident are just really good at faking it. So, uh, and so I was terrified to be on stage. And so I wrote this song in the same sort of way, like to reinforce every, so I start every concert with that song. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people responded to it because people would send me pictures of, they would get those lyrics tattooed on their bodies and send me pictures of it. And, and it was so cool to see that that idea was infiltrating all these people all over the world and people who didn't even speak English as their third language or fourth language, you know? Um, anyway, so uh, that's why it, it worked for me. Sure. And I'd open, I still play that song pretty much the first song every, every night I get on stage. It calms me. It sort of like triggers something in me where it's like, all right, let's go. Right. Um, and so I'm hoping this song here right now, I mean, I wrote that song, No Envy, No Fear, in like 2009, 2008, okay. so 12 years ago. I'm still working on it, but I, I'm, I've gotten a lot better. I'm, I'm more confident. I don't have as much fear. Um, I, 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 of course, have envy when I look at, like we all do, but I have much less mm. envy um, because I feel like I'm, you know, we all have what we have, and to be content with mm. it is is key that's that's gold you know um, so of course I still struggle with it but uh, much less so I'm hoping here right now hope maybe 10 years from now I will always be living just like as much in the moment as possible because right. I've played this song so many times and enforced 
you know, made myself feel this way. Sure. There's one more song uh, I want to talk about in particular because, um, well, there, there's one uh, line in it. I, I think it's in uh, Don't Let It Hurt You. There's a line, uh, sometimes we can't see our virtue. So the, that line, where did that come from? Is, is that a similar thing where you kind of have to take a step back and realize? That song is all about, uh, I find it so interesting when people look in the mirror mm. and the first thing you see is like something you'd like to change. We see our little flaws, a little scar, a little, you know, something's not, you know, that it's, I think it's just natural. I think so many people feel that way. So I wanted to write a song about, um, about embracing your flaws and your scars and your scars are, I, they're, they're beautiful because you made it through something. It's, it's a reminder of what you made it through that it, it didn't hurt you. It didn't kill you. It made you stronger, you know, and uh, that's what that song's about. Is, is there maybe something uh, in your musical career that you kind of had to face or an obstacle you had to overcome and that kind of made you better in the long run? My envy, my fear, <laughs> and not living in the moment, Fair I enough. would say. Fair yeah. Um, and now, so, so now when you kind of, can you see a certain reaction in the crowd to those type of songs? Yeah. That they kind of feel what you, what you... I do. Uh, and I especially feel it when they write comments to me, like mm -hmm. on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or something where I can really uh, read their responses to certain songs. And when I, get, you know, touring, it's interesting, you know, when you're, not that I was a musician when I was 20, mm. but it's a, it's a young person's game, you know, like you want to sleep, drive everywhere, never sleep, sleep in your, sleep on floors, sleep wherever you fall, you know, and um, as you get older, you start thinking like, ah, I want to be a little more comfortable on tour, you know, um, and I'm lucky that I, you know, I'm on a tour bus and I'm in a bedroom and I, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely. I'm, I'm extremely fortunate. But um, I try to keep myself as comfortable as possible on the road so that I don't get burned out right. and I want to keep doing it. So that when I'm off the road, I, I'm like, I want to get back on the road, dude. I jones for it. I, um, not, I'm not thinking about like, oh God, that's going to be exhausting. I'm right. thinking about it like, I want to play more. I want to play for people. I want to make them feel something. I love that feeling more than anything, connecting mm. to people all over the world and I think most creative people, most artists, no matter what you do, there's always a sense of alienation. Mm. Um, especially when you're a solo artist, not a, you know, I don't have a, a, we're not a band, you know, I hire musicians to play with me on tours and in the studio and, but they're my songs. I write the, I write all my songs and, and I produce sometimes, sometimes I use a producer, but like, it's, it's pretty much me. Mm. Uh, and me making myself vulnerable every night on stage and in my songs. And that, that can be daunting and exhausting and emotion, you know, emotionally draining. Sure. So it's important to, uh, I don't know, try to keep yourself as comfortable as possible on the road and, and, uh, and, and have fun with it and just, I, I kind of went off on a tangent. I think I can't uh, even forget the actual question. No, but that's fine because, um, well, what you mentioned, because uh, it, it is very taxing and it's very draining, but at the same time, there's this, I suppose, such a reward to it in, in it's the, the end. the best reward. Mm. Oh, about, like, when I meet people after the shows, kind of and they tell me, oh, I was, that's how I got onto that topic of being <laughs> tired, was sometimes it's exhausting, and you wake up, and you have, I have interviews all day today. Right. My, the guys that I hired, my band, they're on a day off walking around Amsterdam <laughs> having fun, you know, and I'm sitting here working, and it's... It, I, I feel fortunate that anyone even wants to hear what I have to say. So of course I'll do it. Mm. But, uh, and it helps get your music out there to people all over the world. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, but in those moments when you're tired and you just want a day off, when I, I think about mostly is um, certain f people I meet that a certain song of mine has helped them through something. And that's what keeps me going on the times when I'm, during the times when I'm exhausted. Yeah. Uh, someone that comes up to me after a show and says, you know, my, both my parents were in a car accident and died and I listened to this album over and over and over again and it got me through it. You know, and you're, 
you're so touched by it. And you, you can't even believe when you're writing these songs that somewhere in Amsterdam, someone would go through that or someone in Africa or someone in, you know, China or it's, uh, it's so humbling. Right. So that's what gets me through it. And then it says a lot about the, the universality of, of music. I try to write in universal themes. Mm. Um, I love when, when the, the majority of people can relate to something I've written. So most of my songs are about falling in love and falling out of love, or most of them falling out of love. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, every now and again, I have a, a few songs here and there <laughs> about other things like The last song on this new album is called What Would You Do? It's a refugee song. Right. I tried to write a song from the perspective of a, of a young child being separated from their family at the border. Because um, I hate that policy in America and it's, yeah. it's, it's abhorrent and disgusting. And immigration has become such a huge issue for everywhere in the world. Sure. Um, and all these conservative factions are popping up everywhere in every major city and It's so scary, this fascism and racism. So I just figured anything I could do to like lend a voice. Mm. Who knows if it helps, but I don't know. Final question then, because I'd like to give you some time off as well. Oh no, I didn't mean <laughs> no, it like no, no, that. No, no, I, I know, I know, but the uh, final question, that's, that's fine. You mentioned um, uh, kind of that connection that people can have with, with your songs. And obviously, like you said in the beginning, you're a fan of music as well. So is there one song you've heard in the last year or so that had a similar effect on you that you found a lot of solace in or found a lot? You mean a new song or an old song? Like just just, a, just something uh, that I heard for the first time? Yeah, just so maybe the, uh, it, could, it could be one of your own songs, but it could also be some uh, just a song you heard. Hmm. Well, not one of my own songs, man. <laughs> I don't listen to my own music. <laughs> I've already written it. It's like, yeah, what, uh, what am I, I'm not going to learn anything from it. Um, gosh, so much. It's so it's hard. I always Or maybe just such... an artist that has a, has a deep uh, impact on you. Maybe that's a little bit easier. Mm. Well, it doesn't have to be from from the last year. It can be can be growing up as well. So just just a song or okay. an artist that had been meaningful for you. Yeah. Well, Dylan is always my okay. my go to in terms of songwriting. Right. Um, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many songs. It's just it's endless. Uh, the pressure of picking a song. It's, Fair enough. Um, I mean, the first song I ever learned to play on the guitar was a, was a Bob Dylan song called Don't Think Twice, It's okay. All Right. And a lot of times I end my concerts with it. Okay. Uh, I play it in a much different way. Because I think when you cover a song, you should try to make it your own in a way. Mm. I don't understand when people cover songs and it's... Like note for note. It, it's the production. It's the exact same thing with just a different singer. Mm. It's, like, it's like a karaoke song. It's like, okay. Why not just listen to the original? It's better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's no way to improve on Dylan, but uh, that song, I remember hearing it for the first time and just going, ah. I, I had just started playing guitar. And I was like, I, I have to learn the chords. That's how I learned how to play the, those chords, right. was learning that song, because I wanted to play that song. That's interesting that you say that because a lot of your songs has that fingerstyle technique that that song. Uh, well, he it's a different technique, but he, he his is much cooler. <laughs> um, I I didn't take any lessons. I just sort of would sit on the couch and play over like as a meditative thing. So I think sometimes I play when I'm not finger picking. I just play with my thumb, like instead of with mm. a pick, but just just my thumb like strumming like that, like um, because my voice is so quiet that I, if I use a pick, it's overpowering. Mm. So I kind of had to learn to play based on my vocal style. So a lot of people, when they see me, I don't think I'm a great guitar player at all. I, I think I'm just using the guitar as a, a vehicle to write songs okay. and like, um, but then certain guitar players will be like, how did you do that? And I'll be like, 
but you, you're an amazing guitar player. And they're like, they can do so many things I can't, but they're like, this one little thing that I do, they're like, that's cool, that's your own thing. And that's interesting. It, it, it's something about it. I, I think that's cool. The, that's the music good, is yeah. like, I always, I never understand how me. There's yeah, also, whatever, I don't even know no, what I'm saying. There, there's also always a little bit of personality that goes into kind of the way you play and the way yeah. you sing and everything. Yeah, especially if no one teaches you, if sure. the, your instructor didn't teach you this. This you're is just, the right You're way just way sitting there over and over again playing, oh, you know, and figuring out, go, oh, well, I like the way that sounds, so I'll do that over and over again. And then, oh, then you find something else. And you're like, oh, I like that style. It's cool. And it makes you feel so <laughs> good when you figure something out. Right. It's like a puzzle. All right, Joshua, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Al.